Hey guys, my name is Matt Smith. I am back to do another SEC season preview video today, and our focus today will be on the Ole Miss Rebels. Five and five a year ago, went four and five in the SEC, did not get to play Texas A&M. That would have been a fun late season game, but COVID erased that one from the schedule. So five and five, they finished after winning the, uh, the Outback Bowl over a really good Indiana team. So a nice close to the season for Ole Miss. I think everyone in Oxford is pretty pumped about this team and where it's heading under Lane Kiffin going into year two. And we'll see if they can get to some of those loftier goals now that Hugh Freeze has established that, yes, Ole Miss can be a New Year's Six SEC West title contender. And uh, does Kiffin have the horses this year to do it? We'll take a look at these Rebels here. So, first of all, both coordinators are back. That's good news in a league that's had a ton of coordinator turnover this year. Jeff Levy definitely going to be head coach of Canada if this Ole Miss offense performs anywhere near it did a year ago. Young guy seemed to click right away with Matt Corral, quarterback. So his future is very bright. DJ, Jer DJ Durkin, defensive coordinator, got dealt a rough hand with very limited numbers last year. Of course, the COVID issues on top of that. Just not a lot of raw talent. The defensive side of the ball suffered probably more than the offense from the, uh, the fallout from the NCA investigation under Hugh Freeze and the 18-19 recruiting classes. So they're still building depth there, but I'm pretty bullish if this unit can take a pretty sizable step forward, kind of nowhere to go but up after last year's poor performance for DJ Durkin's defense. So the position groups, Matt Corral, of course, as I said, definitely a Heisman contender. I, I think turnovers are going to be the thing to watch with him. He had 14 interceptions a year ago, two just awful games against LSU, against Arkansas, both tough losses for the, for the Rebels in games. They scored enough to win, but just gave up way too many opportunities with those turnovers. So if he can limit them, he's confident. The arm is there. He's got still got pretty good pieces around him, even with some of their receiver losses from 2020. Um, sky's the limit for this offense with Corral. He could be as high as the first, second quarterback off the board, I think, in next year's NFL draft if he puts a good season together working with Kevin. So um, All-American potential, sure. Yeah, again, Ole Miss probably needs to win at least nine, maybe ten games for him to get there. But he showed last year if he can just avoid the, those – Games where he gets a little bit too confident, like we saw against Arkansas and LSU. Um, we saw in the Alabama game. We saw in the Florida game. We saw in the South Carolina game. This offense can rock, and I expect nothing less here in 2021. Part of that is because of the running game he's got. Lane Kiffin, known more for his passing attacks, calling his shots on the big plays, but he loves to run the football, and he's got three really good ones with this Rebels offense. Jerry and Neely. Kind of your switchblade guy. He can he can line out in the outside, be in the backfield. Kind of gave up his baseball career, so now fully focused on football. Interesting guy to watch here as, as he gets more accustomed to that offense. Snoop Connor is back. Henry Parrish, a young guy, can do a lot of different things. So those guys are all going to see potentially double-digit double, double digit touches each and every game. That wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, really great backfield, maybe not quite as loaded as some of the other uh, some of the other powers in this league, but in terms of three deep, I don't think anyone has the trio, maybe outside of Georgia, that Ole Miss does this year. Receiving core, of course, the big losses with, with Kenny Yeboah and Elijah Moore going from that receiving core. Two names to watch that played a decent bit last year, Jonathan Mingo and Dontario Drummond. They're your one and two guys. Not a ton of depth. Those two guys really do need to stay healthy, or we will have some legitimate concerns at this receiving core, even with Corral as good as he is at quarterback. The offensive line, the nice thing about pre-Kiffin was that Matt Luke was an offensive line coach, the former Ole Miss head coach. So that group probably didn't suffer as much from a couple down recruiting classes. That's a pretty good group. Uh, Nicholas Broker is probably the leader at left tackle. Ben Brown's a veteran center. So that group, while not a great unit, I think should be pretty solid and not a ton of concerns about that group heading into the season. Flip over to defense, where can they improve? I'm pretty confident in the back seven that they're going to take a big step forward. Linebacking core, Otis Reese just was able to get his feet wet late last season. NCAA was kind of screwing around with his eligibility, being a Georgia transfer. But they get to play toward the end of last season. Played well. High hopes for him after a good spring. Chance Campbell, another transfer coming over from Maryland. Uh, Lakia Henry's been there a while. He's played a good bit of football. So that linebacking core is solid. Like the secondary as well. I think they should also take a big step forward. Defensive line, I still have a, a good bit of concern there. Just not a lot of depth built in yet. And as we know, the Russian coverage has to work together. So for that back seven to be able to live up to their potential, they got to be getting pressure on the quarterback. They, he can't be having four seconds to sit back there and scan the field and get the ball out. 
If so, you're going to make a potentially decent secondary look bad. So if that rushing coverage can work together, can a guy like Sam Williams, who had some off-field issues last year, has been back with the team since for the last 12 months or so, if he can take a step forward and really create a pass rush, then this defense, I think, really could be in the middle of the pack in the SEC. I can't go there right now, but I do think they take a couple steps forward because I think that back seven is pretty solid. Second year under Durkin, full off season. So definitely confident that this defense will be good enough, not for Ole Miss to probably win the SEC West, but to achieve what I think most fans hope for, probably nine, potentially ten wins with a bowl game. Look at the schedule. It sets up great. Opener with Louisville and Atlanta on Labor Day night. We don't know what we're going to get from the Cardinals last year. Pleasant surprise of 2019, a bit of an underwhelming surprise in 2020, losing record even in the all-ACC schedule for the most part. They underachieved last year. So I think Ole Miss should win that game, but a pretty good test in the opener there. Rotating game is Tennessee. We actually kind of have two games on this schedule where there's going to be so many off-field storylines. Um, of course, Kiffin going back to Knoxville for the first time as the head coach since leaving Tennessee in the middle of the night. And then they also play Liberty. Hugh Freeze will be back in Oxford for the first time since he was fired in 2017. But in terms of on the field, Ole Miss is clearly better than both teams. They should be you know, 10 to 14 point favorites, I would think, in both games. So you're going to hear about, all oh, what an emotional day for Ole Miss when they're playing their former Harry coach. None of these guys care about Hugh Freeze. Maybe some of the fifth-year guys were there for a couple months before he got fired. That's going to be a national media storyline. Lane Kiffin doesn't care. Matt Corral doesn't care. All that is is just a, a pretty good Liberty, Liberty team coming in. Tennessee, we know they're going to struggle this year, so don't get caught up in the hype of that game. Ole Miss should handle both of those teams with ease. So Then, of course, Vanderbilt also on the schedule. They have an idle week before going to Alabama, so if you're going to have any shot at the Crimson Tide, I guess having the two weeks two weeks to prepare is a good thing there. Um, LSU comes to town. They'll play Tennessee the week before, so not really a tough back-to-back -back there. Liberty is in town before A&M, so again, not really two back-to-back -back tough SEC games anywhere on this schedule for Ole Miss. Wrap it up Thanksgiving night against Mississippi State, so a pretty condensed schedule, actually. Opening on Labor Day at the end of the first weekend, playing Thursday night, the final game, only one out of a week. So good bit of football there. So they'll be tired by season's end. But again, I think overall the schedule sets up very nicely. And in terms of a prediction, I'm bullish on this team. I'm going 9-3, and 5-3 and three in the league. I have losses to Alabama, A&M, and then at Auburn, which comes the week after at LSU. So if you're looking for a potential letdown spot there, it's probably going to Auburn. They've only beaten the Tigers once, I believe, since 2012. I think they... Uh, they won down there in 2015 when Auburn had their disappointing 6-6 six six year. But uh, Auburn's beaten, beaten down pretty good in the last seven or eight years. So that's going to be a tricky spot, especially if they're coming off a high, potentially, of a win over LSU the week before. So I'm going to say they do beat LSU and then go down to the Plains and lose, but do rally and finish 9-3. and three. That puts them probably right on the bubble for a New Year's Six Bowl. I don't know if they quite get there because they may not have a really good win. If, say, I'm wrong and they lose to LSU and beat Auburn, who goes 7-5, and 6-6, six and six, there might not be a real quality win at all on the schedule if they're losing to Alabama, LSU, and Texas A&M. So even though they've gotten in at 9-3 and three in the past for the Sugar Bowl, for the Peach Bowl, I'd say probably outside looking in if they go 9-3 and three for a New Year's Six bid this year. But that depends on other conferences, other teams. So hard to say definitively at this time whether that would be good enough or not. So as I said, I do think that's outside looking in. So I have them in the Citrus Bowl. I can't remember the last time Ole Miss played in the Citrus Bowl. Maybe they never have. Um, that'd, be a, that'd be a great step up from the Outback Bowl last year. Again, not quite the New Year's Six, but the Citrus Bowl is clearly uh, right on that next tier below the New Year's Six. So I have Ole Miss playing Penn State. Pretty fun matchup there. Some fiery brash coaches in Lane Kiffin and James Franklin. So that's where I think they'll end the season there down in Orlando. That's the Ole Miss preview for you. Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the Rebels. Again, pretty fascinating team. I do LSU probably is the most interesting team overall in the league just because of their high variance between ceiling and floor. But Ole Miss, with what Lane Kiffin showed in one year after a crazy offseason, I think that ceiling is raised pretty darn high this year for this Rebels team and into 2022 as well. So please follow me on Twitter as well, at MattSmithCFB. Written preview will be up at southernpigskin.com. Thanks so much for watching these videos, guys. Great feedback so far. Love doing them and can't wait to get this season started. Thanks, and I'll talk to you all soon.